Over the past 30 years, I've been devoting my life to animal rescues in the south of England. If this roof collapses, we're both going to be in mighty big trouble. <coughs> Never has British wildlife been more under threat. Run, Alex. He's going to slip. People and animals are increasingly coming into conflict. This is within a mile of the M25. Ah, stress. Oh, was close. <laughs> After 16 years of Wildlife SOS on the television, this is our first ever series of Wildlife SOS online. In this episode of Wildlife SOS, Lucy deals with a badly injured slow worm. We're going to have a bit of trouble here, I think, closing this. And our little badger cub gets a new friend. It's an exciting start to the week here at Wildlife Aid as I head out with Sean, one of our senior rescuers, to free a sparrowhawk that's got itself stuck in a warehouse. I'm in theory I can go across that beam there to that end to drive him. This is why Wildlife Aid goes through such a tremendous amount of rescuers when one talks about going across that beam and catching there. My days of doing that are long gone. Well, it's a very useful device, this one. It's our new addition. It's horribly expensive, but as you can see, it can poke into little corners, and it's quite useful for seeing if we can make him move. As I continue to play with my new toy, Lucy checks up on the fox cub with a neck injury. Let's have a look at you. That looks pretty good today. It's still very oozy and not perfect, but I'm happy with that. I think it looks really good. What I'm going to try today is to put a bandage on it. If this wound was on a leg, a bandage is the way to go because it encourages the, the, the skin to heal. But the trouble with it being on a neck is it just dries out and the, the, all the stuff that we put on it just falls off. So I really want to keep the antibiotic gel in there properly. And the only way to do that is a bandage but it's just really whether she's going to tolerate one because it's a very awkward area to put a dressing on. I've chosen pink because she's a girl. I think she's going to have to hide from the other cubs at the moment. They're going to think she looks pretty stupid. <laughs> but having said that, we do actually keep her on her own at the moment. So the best part is really when we've hopefully fixed her and we've made her better. I can't wait to see her go with other cubs. It's such a lovely sight to see. They tear around playing and having a great time. So you're going to be a bit lonely a little bit longer until we've fixed you. Lucy is extremely lucky that I wasn't around to witness such a ridiculous bandage on a wild animal. Back at the warehouse, the garage staff are eager to see how we're going to catch the sparrowhawk. Are you ready? It gets quite fun because he just flies everywhere and if you try to get located in one place he's just going to fly away so we need him to get a bit more tired and we need Sean to be ready if he goes that way to catch him. Sean's very good, he's a master of disguise. Oh Sean! No! Now you can't miss him now. Oh yes you can. Oh, yeah! Well, it's amazing. I get very upset at this point because I like doing the rescues and catching the animal, and Sean got that so quick. And you could see what he was like up there. He was just flying around everywhere, and Sean just had to be really quick, whip him down. And Sean, sadly, gets the honours of letting him go. Look at that. Well, rescue release is always the best for me, and to see him fly off back up there, he'd been in that a garage apparently for three days so he must be really hungry he's gone off there's hundreds if not thousands of pigeons around here so he'll find some food soon it's just great to get in there get him back out in the wild where he belongs what our work is all about back at wildlife aid the little badger seems very depressed and still isn't eating by himself so lucy and i made the decision to give him a foxy friend to hopefully cheer him up and stimulate his instincts to compete for food. Oh, 
go. She is a bit smaller, but she's the only single cub we've got. Oh, I hope this works. Well, all we can do is see. We can separate immediately if he doesn't. Well, we've got all this dinner ready for them. So what have they got in that lot? This is puppy food, chopped chicken, and some of the badger gloop on the top. Scrambled egg, mince and sausage. And this one's banana flavor porridge. So you're not going to know what's hit you when you get all of that lot. Are you ready to introduce to each other? Look, friends. Are you going to be friends? get a little bit more interaction than this and we're just starting to get a little bit now but I think we'll just leave them alone we've got CCTV in every pen we have here so we can monitor the animals without stressing them out so we'll do exactly that we'll sit back leave them in here and monitor them on the closed circuit television to make sure nothing goes wrong and although it's very sad we hope we get another badger cub in quite quickly because they need to start to socialize as soon as they can well we've just had this new patient arrive and unfortunately the people were doing some gardening and they've run over him with their lawnmower. He's a very beautiful slow worm. It's actually a girl and you can tell it's a girl because she hasn't got the stripes down her back like the males have got. Um, although she's called a worm, she's actually a lizard. They still have the limbs but they're inside, they're what they call vestigial limbs. She's got a really nasty wound on her back. So how I'm gonna check whether she can feel the rest of her body is just to very gently nip the end of the tail and see if she moves, which she is. That's moving. That's really good. That means that she hasn't got any spinal trauma there at all. And we want to keep stress to a minimum for her, so we will give her a little anaesthetic, keep hold of her so she doesn't go shooting up the pipe. Any anaesthetic is a risk for any species, but reptiles are actually a lot more of a challenging anaesthetic, so we're going to have to keep an eye on her the whole way through to make sure she continues breathing. What Sarah's making for us is a made up Blue Peter style mask so that it's just her that's breathing in the anaesthetic and not us. This machine is actually a human blood pressure monitor but we can use it in the animal world to listen to the pulse of the animal. Wow, that's amazing isn't it? Now there's no guesswork involved whether she's struggling under the anaesthetic or she's even still with us because we can actually hear her heart beating, which is fantastic. So at the moment we're just seeing how much of the tissue is damaged, how much of the skin we can save. The skin has to have a blood supply to, to be able to heal. If it's too damaged, it's not going to heal, so it it's actually makes the situation worse to leave it there. We're going to have a bit of trouble here, I think, closing this. Just before the first stitch could be put in, the slow worm's heartbeat stops. Lucy now only has seconds to get it going again. Coming up on the next episode of Wildlife SOS, I try to solve the mystery of the disappearing pigeon. How can a pigeon vanish? That's absurd. We x-ray the leg of our Canada goose. His hips, one of them felt different when we were on the side of the water's edge. And we find out if Lucy can get the slow worm's heart beating again. It's the end of October, right when hogs are storing the last little bit of fat that they have before they go into hibernation. And we get a hedgehog this size in. 